All right, Marcia, it's official. Can you see my slides? Yes. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Um, if you need your extra cup of coffee, now is the time to go get it because <laughs> we're going to talk for about four minutes. That's up, up right up front. Um, so I want to welcome you to marketing does not equal business development. Um, the, the topic has meant different things to different ones of us. Some, some of the folks on the panel have marketing departments and business development parts, departments with distinct ideas about their identities and their roles in firms. And one of the problems that they face is how they can you know, collaborate and support each other. Some of us have a marketing department, but we also do business development and communications and anything else that like smacks of sales or promotion with no distinction between these different roles, no clear understanding of, of how one supports the other. It's just all the stuff we do. So we're coming at this topic from very, very different perspectives, you know, depending on the size of the organization of our firm. Um, and I think we all welcome questions um, as we go. We'd like you to throw them into the chat or, you know, raise your hand, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. We'll, we'll pick up on them and ask them at the appropriate moment. Um, so as not to trip everybody up, but also to make sure that voices are heard. We'll also try to uh, reserve some time at the end for additional questions that folks have. Um, but we're going to be running through a series of about five or six questions that we've generated from our own conversations uh, to make sure that we hear from our panelists on all these different topics related to marketing not being the same as business development. Uh, one point of housekeeping, we'd love for everybody who's not on the panel to turn off their videos for now while the panel is talking. And feel free to turn your videos back on and um, you know, at the end when we get to Q&A. And uh, please mute so that we don't hear you get your second cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> and with that, I'd love to turn it over to Marsha Miller uh, to introduce our esteemed panel. Yes, Jessica Knapp is the Associate Principal at Perkins Eastman, a large architecture firm with multiple offices through the US. She has 20 years of experience managing business development. She believes the business of architecture is a process that requires awareness, differentiation, and most importantly, teamwork. Julie Nasser, Director of Business Development for Margulies Peruzzi, a mid-sized architecture firm, collaborates to implement strategic business development and marketing initiatives for her firm. She is responsible for growing her company's client base, as well as creating strategies for portfolio expansion. Seema McLaurin, Director of Business Development at Commodore Builders, a mid-sized construction firm, supports the growth of her firm's market sectors by connecting her clients with Commodore's construction experts. Seema seeks to create win-win solutions in all walks of life from business to personal. Su Jin Yu, Senior Associate at Merge Architects, a small firm, is an architect with 15 years of experience who has worked on a variety of project types, including residential homes, workplace, and cultural and educational facilities. She is responsible not only for architectural design, but marketing and business development. And last but not least, Maria Salvatierra, Marketing and Business Development Manager at Wilson Butler Architects, also a small firm, has over 20 years of international marketing experience considers business development to be the driver of the business and marketing its amplifier. She values her ability to stay agile and shift focus as required by her firm's dynamic workload. So we're just so excited again to have this group of panelists to discuss marketing does not equal business development. So from here, I guess we're gonna go ahead and begin our questions then to the panelists. And we're gonna start with Jessica. The question, please give, for all the panelists, these questions are, please give a one minute definition of what business development means for your firm, followed by a definition of marketing. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I take more of a general management and operations look at marketing and business development, um, mainly more of a personality thing than anything else. Um, and I, as Marcia said, I really, really think of it as a team sport. But that being said, you know, we've all discussed this. There are differences between marketing and business development. And to me, business development is more about the strategy to win the work. Um, and that includes, you know, the management of business relationships, strategic partnerships, internal relationships, building the right team internally. 
um, making sure you have the right people with the right skills, right portfolio, the right resumes, that sort of thing is more of the business development strategy side. And then marketing is more of the communication of that and the consumer targeting. Um, so once the business developers really kind of develop this persona of the client you're trying to win work from, marketing can help figure out how you translate your work and your portfolio to make them understand and build the trust that they need to hire you. Um, one place where I think it really gets blurry is sort of that research side, like is that business development, is that marketing? But I do think of them distinctly, especially when it comes to the strategic side. Julie, do you wanna go ahead and answer sure. that question? Yep. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with everybody. Um, so to me, the point of business development is to ensure there's consistent work flowing in so we can keep our companies running. Um, I like to say that my role is really connecting the dots. So I connect the dots between the external and the internal knowledge to make all of that happen. Um, there's a lot of strategy involved. There's a lot of behind the scenes work involved, but really, um, it starts with understanding who your targets are. So Margulies Prudzi, we have four studios. We have workplace, science, healthcare, and real estate development. We each have our own target clientele um, that we're trying to reach. And we're very lucky that we work in an industry that has so many associations and events, and it's really targeted towards allowing people to network. So I become the face of the company as the director of business development. I attend the events and learn a bunch of information. I understand what trends are happening. I meet a ton of people. And then I bring all of that information back to the office and then strategize with my team internally to understand what's going on, who's doing what, who do we need to know, and how do we get there? So a, a big combination of the external and the internal, but you, know, you have to be able to do both in business development, I would say. Um, marketing, on the other hand, is a bit more behind the scenes, and I am incredibly lucky to have a wonderful team to support me and work with me and help me along the way. Um, we work very well together, and marketing really takes this information and, you know, the information that we have as a company, and it, it turns it into a visual or a written piece for a broader audience and really promotes the company in, in many different ways makes things look very pretty that I certainly cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> Maria? Hi, hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so pleased to see everyone. Um, so for me, um, at my firm, I, I, you know, I do both. Um, our firm, I would say, I didn't explain that in the intro, focus, um, focuses mainly on architecture for arts and entertainment. So that means that we are very niche and very specialized and we also work at the national level. So because of those factors, I prioritize business development. For me, business development is relationships, relationships with potential clients, relationships with our network, because these people feed me the opportunities that will give us work. I mean, I prioritize work because I work with architects and architects have to architect. They love design, so I have to make sure that work comes in all the time. I use marketing, I call it the amplifier, because I use marketing to tell our story so more opportunities come our way. I mean, our industry is driven mainly by RFPs, so BD is key, but more and more these days we get um, invited to pursue work. So marketing works to amplify our message, to amplify our edge, and to make sure that we are known and we are top of mind. But as I said, for me, BD is the driver and marketing is the amplifier. Sujin? Hi, um, glad to be here. I think it's fitting that I'm after Maria because uh, in our firm, we haven't quite defined those two things, um, BD versus marketing. Um, you know, it's, I think as, as Marsha mentioned, it's about 20 people and we're still growing. Um, I was the seventh employee when I started. So a lot of things we stumbled upon and learned as we went. So for example, 
um, as we were trying to put out portfolios, answering RFPs, we realized we have to curate what we're showing, which is the marketing part, right? And then as we're uh, meeting with clients and trying to um, garner more projects, future projects, that relationship part is coming about. So I think we kind of been doing some of those things that you guys have just, that we've heard before, but without knowing that these are very distinct um, actions or departments that we could possibly think about building in our firm. So, you know, for me, um, I, I feel like the last few weeks that I've been talking to these women in this panel, I've learned my, a lot myself, but I feel like our firm is maybe, maybe some of you guys can relate in the, in the audience, uh, could be something like where you guys are, <clears throat> you guys are starting, you guys are starting to realize a need for these two departments and seeing the distinction between them and seeing how we could be strategic. That's where we are. We're trying to be strategic about how we can build those and help them and like everyone's saying, collaborate and complement each other so that it, it, you know we could offer, we have larger offerings for the people, for our clients, so yeah. Emma? Thank you. Um, it's so fascinating to hear all of these different models for business development and marketing. Um, so I've been at a number of um, AEC companies at this point in my career and um, currently at Commodore. And, and so I just want to say what I've realized over that time is that there is no right answer, right? It's really what works best for that given firm. Um, so at Commodore, um, the way we work for business development is that it's really a focus on relationships, building those relationships so that when an opportunity does arise, they, the, the potential client is comfortable with us. We know who they are. We know what their needs are. We understand their business drivers. And that way, when, if uh, we are invited to the RFP, um, we can really position our services to support their business and their goals. Um, and then ideally, I think most, um, most of us would prefer to negotiate work, right, with our ideal clients. Um, it's, not, it's not like that because it's a very competitive, but, um, you know, that would be sort of the ultimate goal is if we could um, establish that much of a trusting relationship with our clients through business development, through um, establishing the relationships with the, uh, the operations side. Um, to just be able to um, have the have that business just kind of come in. Um, so, how does marketing support um, business development and Commodore? Um, so, for us, um, Commodore, uh, Commodore has a robust uh, marketing team. We have several people who focus specifically on proposals. Thank goodness, um, because those are the people who they're sort of like the behind the scenes heroes. They are they they work long hours often when we're up against a deadline. Right. All of you on the panel understand that. And many of oh. you in the audience do as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, you know, so as a business development director, I could go off to an event and then I could be getting a phone call from Christina back at the office saying, Tima, um, have you heard from so-and-so about the project approach? This is due tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's, uh, you know, get cracking on that. Uh, it's never quite that extreme, but um, so, you know, thank goodness for those folks. And then um, also at Commodore, marketing is focused on, building and maintaining our brand awareness. So that's what Maria was referring to in terms of amplifier. Those are the people who um, before and after has kind of, you know, been out there connecting with folks, going to events, et cetera. That team is making sure that they're really managing, um, you know, Commodore is going to be at the event, pushing that on on social media and then following up afterwards with, hey, you know, Commodore was at the event, these are the pictures, this is who was there, this is what we learned, et cetera. And I'll pause there for now. <laughs> All right. I, um, I think I can turn off the screen share at this point. You've memorized our beautiful black and white headshots. <laughs> so we will, we will get back to the, the grid of faces. Um, but thank you all for, for those, those answers. You know, the next question in our list of, of five questions that we wanna ask our panel has a lot of overlaps with the one you, you just answered. And th that question is, 
What is the practical difference between marketing and business development in your firm? And is there one? And I feel like we kind of heard that already, but what we can do maybe to answer this question is, is explored a little more. Are there different teams that we're, you know, that have different names? Um, are there meetings where all teams come together and, and are there separate meetings? Are principals responsible for one or, or working with one versus working with another? Um, yeah, maybe let's just talk a little bit. Um, and, and we can start with you, Jessica, because uh, that's the order we established, um, <laughs> alphabetical by first name. Um, but I, I'd welcome the group to jump in a little bit on this one, since I think we've kind of already explored the answer. Yeah, I mean, I think the major thread we heard in business development is that it's about relationships, but I don't think that the relationships totally end with business developers because marketing builds relationships just by um, consultant outreach, right? Like mm -hmm. we need materials. We got to ask people at the last minute because we changed our minds or we decided last minute to go for it. Those are relationships. That's important. So it's not cut and dry. Um, I can tell you at Perkins Eastman, the term business development is a fairly new thing. It's really a sales and marketing place, um, but it's changing. And so, you know, this is a topic that's very big for us right now and how does marketing transition to do more business development and who's going to do that versus being more focused on sort of the communication side um, because we do have a separate communications department that's really the PR social media that group um, so you know it is blurry um, and in Boston, especially, we kind of really blur the lines. We have a marketing manager and an awesome new marketing coordinator, which I'm really excited by. Um, but my marketing manager has a phenomenal experience and relationships, so we're not going to squash that, right? So it's not because I say I'm business development and she's marketing. Like We're going to use our strengths at different times and work together. Um, and I think that's what's fun about it, too, because you never know who's going to really pull the weight and have that little nugget that just really puts you over the edge. Yeah. Julie, it sounds like the distinction is more clear at, um, at, at Margulies Peruzzi. Yeah, I would say it's pretty clear, but also very important that we're able to work together seamlessly to make it all happen. Um, you know, as the director of business development, of course, like I was saying, it's very external and then bring it internal and make sure everybody's on the same page. Of course, it's relationship-based. I do think that also becomes external versus internal where, you know, I need to have good relationships with potential clients, current clients, people in the industry, but I need to have a good relationship with my team because if I come back and I bring all this information and, you know, I think I'm better than somebody or somebody doesn't respect what I'm doing, then it doesn't work. So it really is important for the leadership of the company to respect the role of business development and respect the role of marketing and understand that they are really intertwined, but completely separate in what they're doing. And so I'm again, very lucky that my team really does understand that like to the core. And so we have our leadership team that wants to be attending the business development meetings, that wants to be attending the marketing meetings. And my director of marketing is attending my business development meetings and I'm attending her marketing meetings. And it's really one in the same. So we're all on the same page, but it's also, again, very different because now I'm heading off to an event and you know she's helping with the proposals and it's, it's just like a very, it, it becomes a well-oiled machine if it's done correctly. Um, which I do think we have a great system in place to, to make it happen correctly. And um, it's very important for that to be intertwined in a seamless relationship. Hmm. Maria, I have the, I mean, obviously I have the same question for you. I'm also really curious about the role of seller doers in marketing versus business development and whether there's a distinction in their minds at, at Wilson Butler. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I would say, that for me, business development is a very decentralized activity. My, my goal is to make sure that business development is embraced by the whole team, particularly the principals. I don't believe I have to do all the business development. And I see myself as a facilitator. 
and like a cultural ambassador for business development. I don't want them to think that it's difficult, that you need to be an extroverted personality, that you need to go to college to be to do BD because it's about developing relationships, caring about the client and you know, we, we all can do that. Um, I also think it's a long game. It's about the long game. So I don't celebrate the victories for more than five minutes. And I do not cry about the losses for more than two because it can crush you. So you just move forward. It's their loss. Um, and I would say that marketing is more a centralized activity. It's curated by a group of people because it's not the personality of one person. It's the personality of the firm and that has to be very clear so you have the right messages out there and I would say that is more mid-term short term so I would say that those are the the main differences but obviously they are very connected and I do both so it's like having two heads and Sujin I think you've kind of already addressed this at Merge that um that the two are quite merged um but I'd love to hear a little bit more about about how you're starting to think about drawing the distinctions or where they already naturally exist mm -hmm. um yeah I mean I think that someone mentioned this earlier but maybe a lot of you guys could relate but um I think a lot of architects don't know the difference between BD and um marketing um like I've I even know of a principal at another firm who has a BD employee, but doesn't, says to me, doesn't really know what she's doing. So, you know, I feel like uh, this idea of what are the tasks related to those, um, you know, uh, two departments. But for me, as I'm working at Merge, um, I'm realizing the kind of importance of those and um, figuring out, you know, how do we make it not just a stumble, but sort of bring it into a more organized way with, with a plan, with um, all that I'm hearing from you, um, woman. It's like, like I, I'm taking notes. That's why my head's are down <laughs> because I'm just taking notes along with you guys. Um, because, you know, I feel like in order for us to not just uh, um, rely on what relations, relationships we already have, I want to figure out a way to build those relationships that are a little bit, may, maybe a little bit hard for us to acquire, but worth it, right? And um, I do feel like the leadership has to be on board. Um, you know, I'm on board. I'm, I'm trying to get my principal on board. And so, uh, you know, we're working towards that effort. So, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah. yeah. It's um, um, not just a lot of architects, a lot of BD and marketing folks don't know the distinction either. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you. I, yeah, I don't feel don't like worry. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, architects, we're like up in, cloud, in the cloud trying to focus on the design, right? So it's sort of trying to pull ourselves away and think about it, turn, um, turn our minds to something else. And I think the balance of that, um, being challenged with it is a good thing. So, yeah. So I see a question in the chat here, um, but uh, Kate, would you, um, would you like to yeah I'll question? read it yeah more Morgan Devlin uh, posts as a smaller firm where there is not a director of BD our principals play the role of doing that outreach um and I think that's true at a lot of our firms too small or large how can we better equip our principals for this role um and do you want to take it Tima since it's your yeah, turn <laughs> I'd love to give a um response to that and yeah. so first of all Morgan I have to say I'm really glad that you asked this question because um, it, it's a good one. Um, so in terms of better equipping um, principals for this role, so um, I think first and foremost, it's important to be thinking about uh, what, what's your goal, right? So is your goal to um, develop X number of relationships over a period of time, or is it to bring in a certain amount of revenue or, you know, sign a certain number of contracts? Um, because I think when, when any of us are going out um, and trying to develop relationships, develop our business, um, it's important to keep that in the back of our mind, but not let that rule us, right? Because that could, um, you know, at one point in my career, I was given some advice that I was being too pushy. And I thought that's interesting. I've never actually been accused of being a pushy person. But what the person was really saying was that they didn't want me to ask direct 
um, you know, sit down and have a business conversation. They really wanted me to take a softer approach and get to know the person, get to know what their drivers are, get to know what's important to them. You know, that, that question, witty, what's important to you? So I think, um, you know, that's a very valuable, it was a valuable lesson for me. I think it's a valuable tool for any of us is to keep that in the back of our mind. What's important to you? And ask that question over and over and over until in different ways, until you, you kind of start to get the same answer, because that's when you know that you've gotten all the drivers behind that, that person's, you know, what they're looking for. So I think that's one thing. Um, another thing about equipping. Um, so I recently learned about these, um, what are called wax wisdom access questions, wax for short, W A Q. And so wax, wax start with the word what. So, and these questions are designed to elicit um, information, get somebody thinking about what's really um, underneath uh, what they're asking you to do as an architect, an engineer, or a construction operations person. So an example um, would be, um, is just, um, all right, so I should have had an example ready, right? But um, <laughs> instead of asking, <laughs> instead of asking <clears throat> why is that important to you? Because why questions sometimes put someone on the defensive. You can ask them a question more along the lines of what makes that important to you? What, what's beneath that? And the person will start answering those questions. And then guess what? When you go back to the office, you write that down in your CRM, you tell your team, everybody who's working on building that relationship or working with that client, you write it down, you share it because that becomes your value proposition to that client. And then every single time you go and you see that client again, you're talking about those points and you're kind of stringing it all together so that guess what, when the RFP comes out or when you're servicing them through a project, they say, gosh, that Morgan really gets it. She really understands what I need, why I need it, how I need it. And she's got my back. That's what you're ultimately looking for. So I'll pause there and let someone else uh, respond. Yeah, does anybody else on the panel want to tackle Morgan's question as a smaller firm where there's not a director of BD or for any firm, frankly, how can we help equip principals for that role of doing that outreach? Well, it's, um, I would say that I deal with that because, I mean, we have always heard the word billable hours, billable work, and um, billable work. Um, so recently I rebranded that time, magic time. So I don't call it unbeatable work. I call it magic time because it's when the magic happens. So you just have to, um, you just have to basically have a meeting weekly with them, just have fun, make sure that you make the process easy for them. You give them the resources that Tina um, talked about, uh, but it's, it's a, it's a long game. And then, you know, what I do is understand their personalities, their weaknesses and strengths. And strengths. And then depending on the RFP or on the work, I put one principle or another. And it's like a rotating program. So everybody has the access and the opportunity to do it, but not everybody is right for, the, for a particular project. So um, it, it goes two ways. I need to know them and they need to know me. So. Yeah, I think what Maria said about understanding the strengths and weaknesses of different pr principles is incredibly important. Everyone's going to work in business development a different way. Everyone has a different style. And if you're doing it right, you're going to be authentic and you're going to play to your own strengths. And so how you support each principle is going to be different. So I think that's a challenge for people in our roles and that you do have to be able to work with different personalities and different people and you're constantly adjusting and there's no one sort of one size fits all. Yes, I agree for sure. Um, I do think too, it starts with who do you know? Um, so just some easy ways to really start getting people into the business development world is figuring out who is it that they know in the industry, what clients have they worked with in the past, 
or contractors or vendors or whoever on a project and grab a lunch, have a conversation, just get used to talking to people. It can be as simple as that. And then once you get used to having lunches, coffees, you know, conversations about life, the industry, trends, what's going on, it then gradually becomes, oh, what are you working on? Oh, what do you have coming up? And, you know, it, it can then turn more naturally into a business development conversation without being a business development person. I, I do think it can become much more natural if you just think about who do I know? Who do I feel comfortable getting together with? And what questions can I ask that will be smart and natural? I, I, like that, Joy. I, I totally agree. I mean, I feel like that's sort of how I feel like most of the people in our office operates. You know, we just, um, there's people, either consultants, either clients, or um, other people that we know in industry, keeping in touch with them, um, having, like you said, authentic conversations, um, keeping up with each other over coffee or lunch, and then a lot of things build from that, which I think is great. And I think that some people's personality, back to the point of different principles and their strengths and weaknesses, that's just something that happens naturally. And I guess the way to support ones that are not is sort of, I think Maria, you mentioned this in an earlier meeting, like maybe giving them like a, hey, have you like emailed them? Thank you. You know, like that kind of reminders, knowing that principal is maybe not that type of person, you know? So I think um, it's not a checklist, but some ways of like, if who, if some people are more naturally inclined to do that, I mean, if those people who are not, because I think those kind of interactions are what brings about more of uh, these kind of opportunities that we're looking for, so. Okay, so we'll move on to the next question. What are your firms, and you guys have already, again, touched on this a little bit, but maybe we can expound a little more. What are your firm's expectations of marketing's role as it relates to this development? But maybe the, the other question is, since you mentioned, you know, how marketing supports your BD, what do you think those expectations should be if they're not in place at your firm? So, Jessica, do you want to start? If they're, I'm sorry, can you repeat the last part? Sure. What are your firm's expectations of marketing's role yeah. as it relates to business development? Mm -hmm. And if they're not in place for marketing, okay. yeah. what should they be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I think, you know, I, yeah, this is the hardest one, in my opinion. I think it changes every day, and it is such a muddy area, but... I mean, from my experience, I feel like I really got more into business development by both managing and developing sort of events and going to conferences. Um, that's kind of where you started to really get those relationships. So I think, you know, if you do grow from marketing into business development, then the expectation, if that's kind of where you want to go and you don't want to focus more on the communication side, then I think the expectation becomes that you start to get out there, you start to meet with consultants, with potential clients, with general contractors, and you start to develop the relationships um, and you gain information that way. Um, so I think that is the expectation, um, but it, there's no one path by any means. Okay, Julie? So I, I think at our firm, um, the expectation really is that they work hand in hand, they can support each other, um, they work in tandem. Essentially, you know, if I go out and bring in an RFP, I obtain the RFP and then it kind of tran transitions over to marketing where mm -hmm. they'll take it and we'll work with the principals and we'll work with the team and marketing really takes it from there and they they create these beautiful pieces of work that I look at and I'm like oh that's great how did you how did you make that happen so um you know I think it's important that we all work together but marketing really does support the business development efforts um we want to make sure that we've got the right people in place for interviews we want to make sure we're putting the right project teams on specific projects so we really work together to understand who's the client, what, what's the project, what's the need, what's the right team, who do we need to put together? Let's make sure you know, we 
get the right team. We give them some practice for some interviewing and mm-hmm. get ready to go. And we, we kind of come together to do that. Um, so it's really supporting each other and making sure that we have a common goal and we have <clears throat> of getting there. So let's just make sure we get there. Maria? What do you yeah, so, yeah, so when I first started, I was told that I had to be a three-legged stool. I just thought, <laughs> okay, well, that sounds really, you know, balanced. So uh, I, you know, because I do both marketing and business development, I need to understand the marketing toolkit, which is actually, that's, that was my background, including communications and PR. And then I also need to be able to develop relationships or make make sure that people feel like easy, that I am not, um, you know, ashamed of sending a call, uh, sending a call, called email or going to a conference, etc. But the third piece, which is the most challenging and important, and I mentioned before, is creating a culture of BD in our team. So BD is something that everybody should do or at one point in their lifespan of the firm should be doing or should be caring about Um, because as I said I think BD is a firm effort marketing is more like a team effort like a a, of a group of people so um, I have to juggle many balls Um, so that's why you know sometimes one drops (laughs) and I just I have to make sure that many drop at the same time but yeah, so that that's what I would say that those three strands of activity are kind of the focus of of Wilson Baba. Then Sujin. Um, I guess if if I were to imagine a well-oiled relationship in our firm, meaning in the couple in the near future, um, I would like it to be so that a, a person's experience at, with merges interaction, whether it starts from the principal to the um, the BD representative, and then to the content that they see from the marketing team, that it be all like consistent in terms of identity, in terms of what we're bringing. Um, you know, we've had comments said to us that, you know, um, your your website is is not as interesting as your Instagram, for example. You know, it's sort yeah. of like. You know, and that made us think about okay, well, and the inst- people are seeing our Instagram uh, images are so fun and lively, and you guys are doing really interesting work, but then your website's so, you know, just simple, very, very middle of the line. So that kind of comment made made us think as to how do we, um, how do we keep that first personality and keep it consistent through all of our approaches and interactions. So I think I would like. I think that's something of a goal of ours to make sure that that happens. And I don't know how much of that uh, is kind of controllable, right? Because sort of sometimes your interactions is just person to person, but the messaging, um, the kind of stuff that we share, I think that's something that's important that we align all together as we you know, think about our future. So, I'm so glad you brought up social media because I was sure that one of the answers of how marketing supports business development is that you would say like, you know, people doing BD and outreach are finding out things that are of interest to our clients. And that translates into a social media plan that addresses those points. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to say that? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. My marketing team. I do the business development and I work with the marketing. So I want to make sure I'm like giving them all the credit that they deserve because they do so much. I actually called my marketing director, Superwoman the other day, because she's like, oh yeah, I got it. I got it. I mean, she's handling the social media, which then of course is more outreach to the world. We work together on things like strategic marketing. Um, So if we come up with research papers or white papers or, um, you know, anything like that, we can blast it out to all of our clients and we want to make sure we're sending it to the right people. And we've got all that done and over there, um, you know, swag, right? Like if we're going to have some swag for different clients, like they help with that. We all work together to make sure we have the right branded materials for Margulies Prudency, which is out there for the people. Um, <laughs> there's so much that really goes into both of the jobs. And so it it kind of takes a village to make it all happen. And 
of course, I want to make sure I was just thinking like, oh, they do so much. I need to say more. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we we all we do it together. And I think in order for it to be successful, it's got to be a team. And then there's that whole PR section that we haven't even talked about where, you know, hey, if we win a new project, let's get it out there. Let's take some pictures mm-hmm. and get it out there and get some collateral. If I have a client meeting, hey, I need every ground up building we've done in the last five years, put it together, ready, go. And then they do it and they're magic. So there's so many different things that come with this. And I do think, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot and um, it does have to be a well-oiled machine to be done successfully. Mm -hmm. Tina, I'm going to take it back to you just to close out on that question about your firm's expectations. Ah, Role. Yes, and sorry. Um, <laughs> I love what um, Julie said about uh, the the superheroes over there in the marketing department because they really are. Um, I've you know absolutely been in that situation where I need a brochure for something, and um, I call over to to Tina, and she's like, "Oh, yep, we have that right here. I'll have it over to you in ten minutes." And I'm like, "Okay." And can you make sure that you include a piece and you know this, that, and the other thing? And she'll just pull it together, send it over, and it's good. And I'm just, whew, you know. So, thank goodness. Um, so, you know, so they the expectation for marketing is that they manage all of that collateral, um, keep it current, keep it updated, keep the pictures beautiful, you know, getting pictures, uh, photos, um, and accurate descriptions for the, the have wrapped up. Um, and uh, as well as certainly the social media pieces of it, um, Commodore manages a book, um, uh, LinkedIn, uh, we're pretty, we're actually very active on LinkedIn. Um, and one of the um, things that uh, we've been doing a lot of lately, uh, when my senior operations uh, folks on the um, on the construction side is uh, a woman, Lisa Ulbrich. So what I, um, so she's been uh, doing a lot of speaking engagements. And so marketing has been very involved in getting the word out about those speaking engagements and, you know, everything that Lisa and her team have been doing and, and, you know, just getting that out there again for the, um, you know, greater consumption of all of, of the world. Um, and then uh, one other thing I did want to mention, uh, this sort of goes back to Morgan's question, is um, Commodore is uh, moving. I mean, we, al- we always have kind of had this model of, you know, it being in a business development mindset. We're kind of formalizing that now and moving towards more of a business development by all culture. So what does that mean? Um, So that basically means that the folks on the operations side are always thinking about what's next, what's coming up for my clients? You know, what are the subs working on? Who are they working for? Who should I be telling, you know, back at the office, that such and such a company is be go- is going to be doing an expansion. And I know that because the electrical subcontractor is working on the plans for that right now. Um, so, you know, just connecting those kinds of dots and then making sure that information um, gets to a person who can take the action on it. And it's not that, that the, you know, assistant PM on the site can't take action, but Often that's outside of their comfort zone. But guess what? They're thinking about business development. So they're saying, oh, here's an opportunity. I'm going to pass it on. Do I want to be involved or do I not? And then marketing, BD, the operations folks, and this person all work together to put together a, um, you know, a communication or a pursuit plan. How do we want to dig up more information on this? And we all work together to kind of bring that intel um, into the firm and, you know, work it through the, through the best process, both for us, as well as for the potential client. Um, and there's one other thing I want to say, and that is, um, there's a, um, Carolyn Campo, um, with whom I had the pleasure of working with at Commodore, um, for a, a little while. Um, she introduced us to this fabulous concept called the significant interaction. SI for short. So what is that? So a significant interaction, um, and I don't think Carolyn's on the call, but I 
like from the moment I heard about this, I'm just like, this is genius. How come like I didn't come up with this, but she did. So I have to give her all the credit. Um, so a significant interaction is basically when you are talking to um, somebody and you find out a key piece of information. So it has to be significant. Um, in other words, it's a new opportunity or you learned about a key decision making factor or you learned about a critical piece of information that has to do with that client or has to do with that opportunity. And, um, and then basically the, the goal is that that would move Commodore closer to bring in that piece of business. So that's another tool to share with your teams a significant interaction and um, the, the, and that's a very tangible way of tracking um, you know leads through your pipeline and also bringing those back um, uh, uh, to the firm. Um, marketing typically um, is not involved uh, tracking down the SIs, but as we're getting more into our BD by all, um, mentality, everyone is going to be responsible for and measured in some way on their significant interaction. Well, everybody, including the reluctant PM or the potentially including reluctant. Including the reluctant PM. Yeah, maybe <laughs> culture. Um, you know what, uh, panel, I feel like question four and question three are so similar that we've kind of already answered four. So instead of sort of making you repeat yourselves, I'd, I'd love to ask one or two questions that have been thrown into the chat. Uh, one of them it really has to do with drilling down on the, the roles and the ownership of different parts of the proposal and, and pitch process. Um, so it's from uh, Kim, then she asked in your firms, who writes the RFPs? Is it the business development director? Does your marketing team do that? Is it a combination? Do principals write? Do principals get involved? Um, and then as BD director or as director of marketing, are you the lead on pitches? Who's the lead on the pitches? Is it principals? So if you want to address who has the ownership for these pieces of the proposal and interview process, that'd be great. I can give the most vague answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Um, it, it depends who brings in the lead. It depends who's available. It's usually for the big submissions that, you know, we want to win. It's all hands on deck. Um, I tend to volunteer to take cover letters because I love writing them and getting all those little tidbits that you've learned through the process right in there. Um, and I like to start that at the beginning and then have the rest of the proposal kind of take shape and then rewrite it at the end. Um, just because it kind of gives you a framework for what you're doing and what the hot buttons are. Um, but, you know, the principals do get involved for us. They're usually in charge of writing the project approach, putting together the schedule along with the project managers. Um, so the more technical side um, and then marketing's pulling together 90% of the submission, but everybody does get involved. Yes, um, it always depends for sure. <laughs> but in general, I would say that um, once an RFP comes in, I become more of the coach as opposed to the quarterback. Stacy and Mike become the quarterback and they take it and they run the principles will always be involved. So depending on who brought it in, somebody's going to know a lot about what the client's looking for. And so we'll always meet, it'll be myself, the marketing team and the principal. And we'll discuss what was the situation? What do we need to do? What's our game plan? Who's doing what? And we break it down into, you know, different roles. And then we'll meet again to make sure those roles were completed. But I would say marketing becomes the quarterback and then the principal's or like the linebackers or something, <laughs> <laughs> the receivers, I don't know. Yeah. Julie, Julie, I'm sorry. I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Do you guys have like uh, an outline that you use or does it depend on the RFP? Cause that's something that I found was useful, um, you know, as another tool. So I'm curious how you guys do it. Yeah. Um, it definitely depends on the RFP because some of them are very specific on what they need you to say and some aren't, but that's where I give Stacy and Mike 
lots of credit for being wonderful, but they always will come to those meetings with a very organized outline of what do we need to have. And then in that meeting, it's very clear of who's doing what. And then by the end of it, it's like, go team, go. <laughs> Maria, you want to take yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. So in my case, I, again, I am kind of the facilitator. So I make sure that I create the outline, uh, like a draft for everything that has to be produced because seeing a blank a piece of paper or like a blank space on your computer is very challenging for some people. So I, I work with very good writers. Typically architects don't write well. That's what I thought in the past, but I'm very lucky <laughs> to work with very good writers. Um, so I understand who can write a very good cover letter. Paul is very good. Uh, we have even been told in uh, RFP processes, you know, you have the best cover letter and, you know, we feel very proud about that. Um, then I identify who is the right person to customize the narrative for every project, although I create like a baseline of a description so they can only have to edit and then my role is to make sure that they rehearse that they write it that, that they stick to the deadline so I'm, i become as julie said the coach and i i have to be you know you are gonna meet today we are gonna rehearse three times do not complain please we are gonna rehearse three times maria i don't like rehearsing it kills the it kills the magic and i know <laughs> no, it won't kill the magic. It will kill the project. So just rehearse again, please. So I become the, you know, the coach and the facilitator. So, but yeah, it's uh, just to answer the question more succinct, more like uh, in short, uh, the, the principles really help me write because it's a very technical expertise. And there are many nuances that I don't know because I haven't done the, the work, the design work. So it's very collaborative. But yes, yeah, so I become the facilitator and they do sometimes the, the actual work of writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, I love to hear about these team approaches um, right now in our firm. Current is, oh, it used to be for a while that two of the senior associates, myself and a colleague, would literally do sort of all of that, you know, kind of gather the information, be, uh, figure out how, how we're going to achieve it. Um, the deadline, um, and then we figured out that, you know, we do have our boilerplate kind of background information, but definitely a more customized narrative definitely gets us on the top. So we've been, so we're the writers on that. And then the principal, we would ask the principal to do the cover letter, but basically, um, and also curating the um, images for past projects. So that's the marketing part. So do, we kind of had to do that um, all together. I would love to transition into what well, we've been slowly transitioning even now to get more of the associates involved. So, you know, trying to split some of that role where I tell someone, hey, can you focus on this for us? And but still having the architect do the narrative. Um, ultimately, I think the goal would be to have a team like your guys's where there's the marketing who kind of focuses on maybe the content of the past projects and maybe a little bit more of a structured outline. But I always feel like the principal or the senior associate should definitely be involved in the narrative, no matter what. Because it, like you said, like everyone said, there's a kind of nuance of some of the discussions or things that maybe are particular to the project goals that they could speak in a different language that could be brought in. But again, it, it, that's being all being said is that the architects can write. So <laughs> you have to have someone who can write. So, um, but I think that's key. Mm -hmm. Um, what, yeah, I guess um, I'll jump in uh, just as the uh, token uh, person representing the CM here. Um, for us, it's an all hands on deck um, exercise from marketing who, yes, tends to be the quarterback, um, business development who tends to have a lot of information and knowledge about the client and what they might be looking for, the operations, you know, the, the project executive often has a strong relationship and has been tag teaming and working in conjunction with business development and opportunities. And then we have the pre-construction department and we have the estimating department and they've got to work with their subs. And then for me, Joe Elise and Tom Camo, my CEO and COO, have very, very strong and longstanding relationships in the industry. So pulling in their intel as well. So it's 
you know, it's a huge effort. And yes, absolutely, Sujin, what you said about customizing, so, so, so important, right? Um, and I've seen a few questions about CRM in the chat. So I will just touch on that as well, because CRM for us is a key part of our, for, for me as, a, as BD person, it's a key part of my day to day. Um, I'm in there all the time, every day that it, I call it my Bible, because that is how I basically run my business development life. And we have a sales pipeline that's very defined. And before it, before a lead moves from one opportunity, one stage of the pipeline to the next, you have to check certain boxes, have certain information so that you know where you are in your pipeline, what else you need to find out in order to be as well positioned as possible for, um, you know, a, a, a great proposal response. So guess what, when a time comes to sit down and actually write the proposal, um, all of the information is captured in CRM. So if, for example, on a week like this, when I'm on technically February vacation and the marketing team is back at the office and let's just say they, they have a proposal that's a quick turnaround because, gee, that never happens, right? Um, so, um, so they can just look in CRM and see all of the information tracked in there. Currently, we use uh, Microsoft Dynamics, but we just, thank goodness, got approval to... Um, use Cosential. So we'll be transitioning to that, um, which I've been told is the best thing ever um, for our industry. So um, you're welcome to the Cosential rep who may or may not be on this call. How do you um, spell that, Tina? How do you spell? Oh, I'll put it in the chat. Actually. Okay, great. So that's actually a great segue to our last question, which is what types of technologies do your firms invest facilitate synergies between marketing and business development. So Tima, you mentioned like the whole CRM essential. Can you panelists please quickly tell us what your firm uses and then we'll try to get in some more of those questions as well. We're still using Dell Tech Vision at Perkins Eastman. It's 1300 people. So a transition to new software is very time consuming. It's not to be said that it won't be done in the short term, but, um, you know, we're looking at Salesforce and essential for us. Um, but the cost is somewhat prohibitive, but still incredibly important. And we recognize that. So, okay. All right, Julie. Yep. So we actually also have Dell Tech. Um, it's <laughs> more for once they become a client, we sort of use the Dell Tech part, yeah. but I've been using HubSpot um, for the tracking of the leads, and there's actually a free version of it. If you just want it to track your leads, you can use it for free, which is lovely. Um, and then it's kind of a la carte, depending on what else you want to purchase. So that's a good place to start if you're just looking to track things mm -hmm. and then have our contacts there and um, et cetera. I would say Teams has been a really big um, software for us in general. I mean, we're like, functioning off of teams at this point as a company. So working remotely has really taught us some valuable lessons about how to communicate. So it's been great. And then um, Trello actually has been really useful as far as we use that during our marketing meetings to just understand what do we have coming up and then you can kind of move it to the done column, which just feels lovely to like check something off your list. <laughs> right, great, great feeling. So there's a, there's a few different um, things that we use as a team. Maria? Yeah, so we use so Zoho, Z-O-H-O, -O, um, CRM, and we are actually customizing that package to suit our needs. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I know I only... I do not only have all the opportunities, they are called actually opportunities, not leads in my Soho program. And then I can move it through the pipeline and I have all the intel about a particular RFP that might come out in two years because things take time, as you know. Uh, I also have all the information that I need to know about a project, like number of changes orders, but, but by the way, now they want to know that. Um, like two years ago, they didn't, and now they want to know that. Um, so I, I don't want to go back to my principles and say, oh, by the way, how many change, change orders again? So I record everything there, so everything is in there. 
Um, and then one of the big features of Zoho is that it sends you reminders on how to reach out to a potential client. It sends you an email so you don't drop the ball. So you can, you know, oh, I have to email Joe tomorrow uh, just to say, how are you doing? Can we have coffee or whatever? So that's a very good feature for me. Okay, great. Hey, Jen? Mm, it's a whole new world for me. <laughs> All these different <laughs> softwares. We just use um, Google Spreadsheet, you know, like the, so far we've been building it, but we're like, we're halfway there. Like we have to start recording all of our past projects. And, but beyond that, you know, figuring out these kind of metrics to sort of check in with us and figure out how to, you know, keep our relationship. So no, I'm learning a lot. This is a lot of different software I should research into. So thank you. Yeah. Tina, you mentioned um, that you're yeah. using. Yeah, I, yes. All of, e, all of the above. <laughs> Defer, because there are more questions. So. All right. So, it looks like there's a question from Chris Jasinski about, um, or did we already talk about that? The story no, and I'm really glad you brought it okay. up because I, I really, I'm hoping that we can answer this. Uh, Chris okay. asked, what, he says he's curious about the panel's thoughts on proactive marketing approaches, like storytelling through video or podcasts or content on your website, social media, things that promote the firm versus reactive and traditional marketing like RFPs. And I feel mm. this question because I feel like we get stuck in a trap of spending a lot of man hours and person hours working on proposals and interviews, mm -hmm. but not enough on the front end, right? So it's, it's, it's like we're doing, we're doing all amplify. I don't know, we're doing back end amplifying. I'm trying to use your, your analogy, Maria. <laughs> I'd love to people hear people's thoughts about the balance of, of these yeah. two. You have to jump in on this. Um, because this is such a, a great um, question, Chris. And, you know, I think this is what, if, if there's somebody on this call who's looking to position themselves as a subject matter expert on a specific area or building type, you know, whatever it is, something you're exceptionally passionate about, like sustainability, this is the way to do it, right? Put your content, your, you know, even just asking questions, interviewing people. Yes, this is how you do it. And I agree that so often we are reactive because our industry is moving so quickly because there's so much happening because all of us are under pressure to bring in that business that we're reacting to what the marketing, what the market is asking of us. But if there's a way to use an, using an overused word here, pivot to um, being more proactive and getting out in front and being more of that thought leader and the leader of the market, um, that's, I, I say, go for it. I think that would be great. And then put it on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook, put it, you know, put it out there and guess what? People are going to, you're going to rock it to the top. But it requires a lot of resources and thought and planning <clears throat> and investment, right? So I think that's why it just most people don't do it. Curious as to others' thoughts. Yeah, I, I call that the in-between activity. So I have <laughs> like a like a list of things that I would do in between when I don't have to develop relationships or work on an RFP because I do both marketing and BD. So I have a list of blog posts that I want to craft and, and promote. I have a list of social media posts that I want to um, share with the world. But for me, unfortunately, it has to be the in-between. I wish it was top of, you know, of the list, but uh, it is important. But I'm going to say something very controversial. I'm a marketing person. It's my background. But work comes from relationships, not from ads, not from social media posts. That's why I call it the amplifier. If you don't have the backbone of business development, in my case, I don't get the work. So that's why I have to prioritize BD and relationships. Again, you know, knowing the client, um, working with my consultants, et cetera, and the network. I agree with that and it is the in-between. Um, however, I do think it is incredibly important and it can 
develop those the start and the familiarity and the brand awareness, um, especially when you're entering new markets, new practice areas. I think that's where you really see the greatest benefit because you get it out on social media. People know who you are. They know what you do. They know how you're differentiated. And at the end of the day, getting them to learn that just even get on the RFP list if it's not a public bid. Um, I think that's a huge piece of it. And I think other markets and other industries have done a better job than the AEC. I think if I was to be critical, AEC is a little bit behind. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, because we have this mentality and it's totally warranted because it's limited resources. Um, but I think there's a shift happening and I think whoever gets on board with this shift and does more of this, is they're gonna be the winners. You're gonna have people following up with you on that. We're all gonna <laughs> get on the ship. <laughs> I also think that, you know, the, the whole work from home situation caused me to pivot my way of thinking about how do we get our face out there? Because typically I'm out seeing a ton of people every week. And when I couldn't physically be in front of people, we still had to be relevant. So we had to come up with different ways to get ahead of the curve and really still be on the top of everybody's mind. So it, it, we got creative for sure. And I think that now has allowed us to continue to get creative and find bigger and better ways to market ourselves um, instead of just being reactive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do agree that proactive marketing has to go hand in hand with those relationships. Um, but I, you know, part of our, um, the challenge that we have in our firm is we've been talking about this is um, we're very academically based, you know, um, our principal teaches at Harvard and stuff like that. So our website, our social media is sort of, you know, we're always trying to figure out, like, I, I always tell them, like, it would be fun if there was a way that when someone goes to our website, it's, you know, an architect version versus a client version, because it's, you look for different things, right? And, um, you know, something like that, where we can appeal to future clients also appeal to fellow architects who are in the industry and likes to figure out, likes to work with us or collaborate with us. So um, that sort of idea of um, trying to bring that proactiveness into our, our presence. Um, one of the ways that you know, we've been doing that is again, through social media where we show progress photos, not just um, finished work, to show that this is the way we think, um, this is the, what, what we're interested in. Uh, one thing that we did recently was we were part of a competition, a Massachusetts sort of triple decker challenge competition. And um, from that, from winning that, we've had a lot of calls come in about our work. Uh, we've also had a lot of articles published about it. So that was sort of a, I didn't even intend for that to sort of happen, but that was an interesting proactive way of getting recognized and people like looking into us that wouldn't look into us before. Yeah. So tapping into these different areas that we wouldn't typically go into. And, you know, I've, and to someone's point about conferences, I was um, from that, we were part of the NESEA conference and talking about the project. So it just kind of, um, you know, kind of, kind of ballooned within a nice way. So I thought that's an example of, I think, a proactive way possibly. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Well, yeah, <laughs> we're out of time, unfortunately. But, oh, 9.30, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys so much, though. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And we are going to post this video on the site. And we do actually have two additional slides that we put together for just the stuff for marketing, creating a marketing plan, and a business development plan with the resource at the bottom, if you guys want to check that out. Um, and so, and then feel free to reach out to any of us regarding your questions. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to all of them, but thank you all so much. We thank really you. Thank you. Have a good thank day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks everyone, it was great. Maria, I've written down cultural ambassador for BD. I'm gonna write it on my forehead. I'm gonna get a hat. Thank you, it's challenging. <laughs> Maybe you, you will do a better job. <laughs> but you know, it, it pays off, it pays off. You have to be patient, consistent, resilient. 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.